Rodrigo Branco was dead. Fabiana was held hostage. I had no idea who was behind any of this. I felt like a fool. I was a sweaty, gray-haired mess. This place, well, this place was gonna kill me too. I could see that now. I decided that I was gonna die sober, not drunk. Ah! At least then I would see who shot me. It was time to take back control from whoever was out to get me. And if I didn't flush them out, at least my midlife crisis would confuse them enough so they did something stupid. It was the only hope I had. I knew I wasn't thinking straight. I'd been drinking and popping painkillers for years. I had a liver like a French goose and skin like red leather. Hello. Hello, Victor. Max? Max, you're, you're, you're alive? Of course I'm alive. We did not know this. We are lost, Max. Our brother was everything to us. I understand. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry about your loss. Both of you. Rodrigo was a good man. I failed him. I, but I was tricked. What happened, Max? I don't know. Some guys from the crush of Prado came into the building downstairs, so while me and the security guard were dealing with them, an assassin must have come in and executed your brother. I, at least that's how I think it happened. No, you killed him, Poha. You killed my brother. What are you talking about? I, I understand you're upset, but please, why the hell would I do that? To get his money, to take his money. How am I getting his money, Marcelo? Please, think. I work my ass off for your family. I saved your life twice or more. And right now, I'm going to get Fabiana. Where is she? Where is Fabiana, eh? She's in a place called Nova Esperanza. How do you know this, Max? One of the Crotch Prado told me just before he died. Please, bring our sister-in-law back to us, Max. Our family is being torn apart. So I guess I was finally about to go and experience the other side of Sao Paulo firsthand. The bit people try to ignore. The unpleasant memory they try to obliterate with cocktails and helicopters and parties and lines of blow, like rich fools the world over. I was a day off the sauce for the first time in years and knew I was due a hangover sent direct from Mother Nature. I had no idea where the hell I was going to go, so I decided to head straight for the street party that seemed to be raging. Either that or some other fool had gotten there before me and now was being ritually sacrificed. I've had better ideas. But then I've also had worse ones, like accepting this job in the first place. E aí, gringo? Get lost, kid. Eu me amarro nos States. Que você precisa de ajuda, senhor? Speak English? Uh huh. Falo sim, sem problema. Need to know if you ever seen this girl, Fabiana. Come here for a second. Look at her. I know lots of girls. Sexy. Come on, come on. This way. Where are you going? Wait a minute. 
Down there? <laughs> Isso. Jesus. This way, come on! At least I found myself a tour guide. The way I see it, there's two types of people. Those who spend their lives trying to build a future, and those who spend their lives trying to rebuild the past. For too long, I've been stuck in between. Hidden in the dark, what was I really doing walking in there with my bad haircut and ridiculous shirt? Was I there to make something right? Or was I just using a messed up situation to indulge myself, grasping at some desperate delusion of control? Maybe the two went hand in hand more than I cared to admit. I had stumbled into some kind of street party. This was the kind of reality Americans paid top dollar to see. Slums had become tourist attractions, places where yuppies could gawk at the endless spirit of the poor from the inside of their bulletproof buses. I felt dumb and exposed. I missed the booze. Not that it mattered, sober or drunk, I was hardly undercover. I stood out in this place like a streetwalker in a monastery. Barracos e morros sem socorro no lugar Sem esperança, nada Sem luz que possa inspirar Continua andando, caralho Que porra é essa que você tá fazendo aqui? Como que você sai entrando aqui assim? Anda, anda, vai pra lá O que você tá fazendo aqui? Eu tô te perguntando Eu te chamei aqui, porra Easy, pal, easy Ah, então, você é americano de merda Look, I didn't mean any offense. Me dá só uma razão para eu não te matar, seu americano burro. Desculpa, amigo. Por favor. Passa tudo que você tem, viado. Pega o dinheiro dele. Pega o dinheiro dele. Ah, relojão, hein? Passa aqui. Dá logo. Dá logo. Da puta. Valeu, mano. Bem-vindo à favela Nova Esperança. All things considered, I was gonna have to look on this as a good outcome. I was deep in gang territory. These kids were raised hating clowns like me. Middle-income ass-kickers who protected the rich by shooting kids like them. First day off the sauce and somehow I'd still ended up in the gutter. If there was one thing I'd learned since I'd been here, it was that Brazilians came out of the womb kicking a ball. And for kids like these, was there one legal chance at a ticket out of here? Oh, 
Sabe jogar palitinho, rapaz? Mostra. Pô, oh, que isso? É a coisa mais simples. Vai lá, mostra pra ele. Você escolhe um dos três palitinhos. <risos> Desculpa, uh, olá. Fala inglês. Uh, I'm a little lost, perdido. Onde uh, estou? Tá no lugar errado, rapá. Não compreende. Uh, I need a phone, a telephone. Bora. Publico. A gente não é centro de informação turística, não. Well, they weren't gonna help me. And who could blame them? I was a dumb American in a place where dumb Americans were less popular than the clap. If I was gonna find my way out of this mess, I was on my own. It looked like there was a bar up ahead. The irony was not lost on me. I figured sobriety was no use to me dead. Bela camisa, hein? Tu perdeu o cuzão, amigo. Hey, are you lost? In more ways than I could possibly explain. I know you. At the disco, with the gun. Yeah, you had hair back then and better clothes. Uh, Anders Dudling from Steel, North Dakota. Why on earth are you here? Well, I'm, uh... Looking for someone. What are you doing here? Oh, we, we came to help the cause. See, after I retired, my wife, she said I had to do something. And well, you know, I always loved kids, so I got involved in Angels of the Hill. Oh, it's a great cause, and they're really great folk, and well, now we come down twice a year to help inoculate the children of the favelas. Yeah, oh, it's simply wonderful giving back. Whole family does it. In fact, my, my little girl's coming in a couple of days. Aren't you afraid? Ah, I was a cop for 25 years. Ain't granted, Steel ain't San Paulo, but, you know, I seen things. And people are the same everywhere, good, bad, and different. Listen, have you heard anything about a, a woman, about 28, rich? She was kidnapped. I heard she was being held around here. No. All right, well, good luck. All right, you too. You look like you need it. I gotta get back at it. Hey, I'll say a prayer for you. Another life lesson I didn't want. Classy-looking establishment would have a phone so I could call Passos. Either that or a gun so I could shoot myself and save these kids the bother. Hey, that telephone? Telephone. Vai, lá no fundo, ó. Segue em frente. When you're stuck in a foreign country and you don't know the words for reverse charges, and you're in some lonely skin joint in the middle of some poor slum, having just had every last cent robbed from you, and you call yourself a bodyguard, then you know you're a loser. Hey, Matt. Can I buy you a beer? Do I know you? I don't think so. Look, if you're gonna shoot me, make it quick, I'm a little busy. 
if I was going to shoot you, I wouldn't waste a beer. Wait, you won't try to dry out a bit. It's just a soda, please. Sure. Why don't you go sit down? Guaraná pra ele. Um choque pra mim. Bem gelado. Interesting haircut, by the way. I meant to tell you that. <coughs> yeah, well. Wilson da Silva. Very good to meet you. Nice to meet you, I think. Although you'll forgive me if I promise never to employ you as my bodyguard. You did a great job watching after Rodrigo Bronco. Fuck you. You were set up. Bet your ass I was. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this guy? Serrano. Yep. He's a real sweetheart. Yeah, he sure put his gang out of business. But don't worry, those guys, they're a small fry. This is the guy I'm interested in. Neves. And this is his little buddy here. Milo Hegel. They work for this vigilante group, Rasha Preto. Yeah, I know him. Well, they're very popular with right-wing politicians, like Victor Branco. Now, you see, many years ago, he helped clear some villages on a bit of land Rodrigo Branco wanted to develop. Rodrigo Branco? Yes, he did some very bad things. Anyway, have you ever seen this guy? Maybe at the stadium. I knew you were involved in that business. You know, I wanted to investigate that, but I got an order to blame it on some local street kids instead. Tell me, what happened there? Nothing, we simply went to hand over some cash to this guy's clowns for a, a ransom exchange when this guy's clowns jumped us and they shot everybody. Apart from you and your boy Passos. That's right. We had to shoot our way out of there. <laughs> they let you go. <laughs> it's okay, it's a little weird right now. But I know that Victor Bronco is involved in all this. I just don't know how or why. And I know that the Ufe are involved in all this as well, but I just don't know how or why. And you know what's gonna happen? The moment is gonna come along when I put all these pieces together, and at that moment, someone is gonna come along and put a bullet in my head. Anyway, listen. I think you might want this. Thank you. I'll need it. And if it's Fabiana Branco you've come looking for, I think she's up the hill. So why don't you just go get her? I don't know. If I'm a cop. I mean, I'll fight corruption. I'll stand up to the rich and dumb, but if I go up that hill right now, I'll be dead in three minutes or less. Maybe you too, Max. You're in the jungle now. So it appears. If you survive the next hour, let's speak. You help me. And I'm gonna do what I can to help you. Good luck! I didn't know what to make of what this guy had just told me. What was true and what was just someone else's convenient bullshit. Then some less than friendly locals came in and found me in the wrong mood to party. Hey, Green! What are you doing? No comprende. Leave me alone. Você tem alguma coisa para mim? Do you got something for me? For you? I'll tell you what I got. I got a gun, and if anybody thinks they're gonna take it from me, they'd be dead wrong.
man of the hour. Had De Silva left this there on purpose as some passive aggressive message to the CS from a cop who was apparently too scared to go near any real criminals. It was a strange power play. Amigo! No, no! Relax, no. soldier. You're American? Oh, jeez, buddy. Am I glad to see you? Oh, fuck me. I've been coming to this shithole town for the last five years. It's like a fucking insane asylum. But it's got the cheapest pussy in the world. Fuck me! I mean... You're in a cat house in a slum, pal, doing who knows what. I'm a businessman, bro. And, and they were fully legal in, in this country. I, I, th I think... And, and I know how to tip, all right? It ain't my fault, man. It ain't my fault. Don't, don't judge me, all right? Have a nice day. Jesus, what a fucking creep. Desce ou não? Foda-se! Isso aí... Isso aí já era, não vale a pena não. É certo. 
fireworks display was clearly in my honor, making sure everyone knew to roll out the red carpet for their surprise guest. I was walking into another not so welcome party. These hoods didn't look like Commando Sombra. Not that I was gonna get picky. This was clearly their turf, and I just shot up their favorite skin joint.
I was getting nowhere fast. The cold turkey was messing with me like I was looking through another man's eyes. I needed to focus. Yet more thugs whose Christmas card list I wouldn't be on. This wasn't Commando Sombra real estate. I had to keep moving. I could hear a woman screaming. I thought I'd found Fabiana, but instead I'd stumbled across some testosterone fest. A bunch of young punks with guns killing time the only way they knew how. Nova Esperanza wasn't exactly a dinner and movie kind of place. I recognized the hoods who jumped me earlier. I was trying to decide whether to crash this party or turn back, when my natural grace and finesse made the decision for me. <laughs>
Saviano's market value was falling by the second. I had to get to Serrano before he dumped his stock. These bastards looked different, tougher, more capable. They didn't look like Serrano's boys, but I could tell I was moving up the food chain. I hoped Fabiana wasn't going to be served up come feeding time. Say what you want about these hoods. They knew more about branding than a Madison Avenue art director. Tropa Z. Looked like Nova Esperanza had a civil war to add to its long list of reasons not to visit. I'd have felt worse taking someone's medication if everybody in that place hadn't been trying to kill me. There was no need to announce my arrival in that part of town. I'd drawn more than enough attention already. uma loira gelada. Você falou que ia buscar, pô. Pô, eu falei pra esse otário aqui três vezes aí que até agora nada. Pô. Vai tomando seu cu, rapaz. Vai buscar seu inveja você. Que pô que tá fazendo lá embaixo. Sei lá, os malandros matariam sua mão por uma trouxa de maconha. Vamos começar! 
Soccer had gotten Claudio away from the favela, but it hadn't gotten him far enough. I couldn't imagine his death had done much to boost the CS's approval ratings in that part of town. Giovanna, charity worker and socialite. Work with the poor and play with the rich. You try to live in two worlds. Eventually you're gonna get your life ripped apart. Charming as this neighborhood was, I'd done enough sightseeing.
I was running the risk of becoming too clear-headed. didn't have a doctor's name on them. I wasn't interested. Azos had told me about this stuff. Oxidado. They called it rust. Packed full of healthy ingredients like quicklime and kerosene. Cheaper, stronger, and deadlier than crack. Easily marketed to the poor and desperate. All in all, a fine, honorable way to earn a living. I couldn't find any clues in this place, so I decided to do my bit for the drugs trade. I was definitely in Commando Sombra territory. If Fabiana was still alive, she couldn't be far away. Security, it had to be Serrano's pad. Since I was in the neighborhood, I figured he wouldn't mind if I dropped in and thanked him personally for his hospitality. It wasn't like he wasn't expecting me.
to hope the king was in his castle. As I approached the spot, I could hear raised voices. Then I saw that Marcello had turned up with a suitcase full of money along with Fabiano's sister, Giovanna. I only understood a little, but things were not going well. I wasn't expecting quite so many armed goons, but there was no backing out now. I would just have to act harder than I felt. Put the guns down! Let the girls go! No one needs to die, asshole! Don't you kill her! Don't you! Okay. Here I was again, with all hell breaking loose around me, standing over another dead girl I had been trying to protect. <laughs> 